Today, we're gonna to take you along for a ride on how we created these cast iron looking table legs out of solid wood. Now, I've never seen these legs designed like this before. I think it'll be an interesting look when it's all said and done. First things first, we developed a template that is made out of quarter inch acrylic. And this will act as a guide for our router to make sure that we get the exact shape that we envisioned. We ended up using roasted ash for our wood. So it's good to go. We bought this roasted ash a couple years ago and it's been sitting around for way too long. So it's overdue for being used in a project. Now, one thing we learned about roasted ash is it's thermally modified. So it closes the cells in the wood, which makes glue ups really difficult. We didn't know this going in, so we just grabbed our normal Type On 2 dark wood glue. And in hindsight, and after a bit of research and talking to our wood supplier, we realized that we're way better off using Type On 3 or a polyurethane glue. So if you plan on using roasted ash, make sure you use a polyurethane glue. Our panels are done. You can see the roasted ash, how delicate it is with the checks in the end. And, you know, we'll show you more later on how fragile this stuff is. We've got our template, find a nice spot on our panel here to make sure that we can cut our full leg design out of this. Now you'll see this template design, it's modular. We designed it like this so that we don't have to ship a full table leg template because it would likely get damaged in shipping and it makes it much more difficult to store, ship, produce, everything. So we've got this modular system, which sometimes it cracks, but it's an easy fix. When we use router templates, we always do the first pass about a quarter inch deep to mark our profile. Then we remove the template and then we bring it over to the bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, you could also use a jigsaw, but we've got a nice 14 inch bandsaw here. So it makes projects like this pretty easy and a little more smooth than if we were doing it with a jigsaw. We got to switch over to a jigsaw to get these internal pieces because that won't work on the bandsaw. You'll see here, it's uh, the whole thing could be done on a jigsaw. We normally like to keep about an eighth of an inch material so that when we come back with the flush trim bit, we can clean up the rest of it. I've seen some people, they try to get really, really close, but then you risk nicking the edge of the design and you won't have a smooth finish at the end. So we like to leave an eighth of an inch and then come back and flush trim it. There's lots of bits on the market that you can use, but we've got a handful that we'll probably link in the description there below. I'm sure you've seen these videos on the internet before, these satisfying flush trim router template videos. They're fun to watch, but they make a huge mess. You can see the wood chips just going everywhere. There's chunks of wood flying all over the place. You can really see how brittle this roasted ash is with chunks flying off. After we're done doing the final profile here with our flush trim bit, you can see a lot of exposed cracks because this wood is sort of fragile and, and there's quite a few checks in it. So we get those filled up and cleaned up and make sure that there's no open voids in the wood. And then we get to sanding. We use a spindle sander for this. It's nice and easy. It gets all the curves where if you were trying to do this with a orbital sander, you would probably change the shape of the design, which we don't really want to do here. We want to keep this shape as consistent as possible. Originally, I wanted to do a, a quarter inch chamfer on this leg to keep that kind of metal look, but we changed it up. We went with the quarter inch roundover instead, which I think turned out pretty good. It kind of flows with the curvy lines. And then once we get to oiling, you'll see how dark this gets. The way the oil darkens the roasted ash, it, it almost looks like wenge. Some people call it a poor man's walnut. I call this a poor man's wenge because it gets really dark and, and sort of emulates that wenge color. So if you're looking to do a project out of wenge, but you don't want to, you know, break the bank by in wenge or, or don't have availability of it, you could always grab some roasted ash as an alternative. We didn't get any footage of this top being built. In fact, this top was sitting in our showroom unfinished for about a year and a half because when the roasted ash first came in, we decided to make a project out of it. but. Other paying customer projects kind of took the lead and this got left behind. So once we started making these legs, we figured this was the perfect top. So we brought it out, did some finishing touches on it, started sanding it, 
planing it down, doing any necessary fills. Sanding tabletops like this, you wanna make sure that you don't remove too much material in certain areas. So we use this technique where we mark the top and then you can see exactly where you've sanded and where you still need to sand without removing too much material in one area. Sanding is one of the most critical steps of any project, especially when you're using a wood like this that the wood will sand away very quickly. We're gonna head over back to our table legs and get these mounting plates all set up so that we can attach them to our wooden legs. We're using some threaded inserts. We use M6 inserts. You could use M5. They're virtually the same strength and wouldn't have any sort of technical difference in terms of strength on a finished table. Now, some people might use dominoes and permanently attach the table legs, but if you ever wanted to switch these table legs out, these mounting plates will allow for an easy change, or if you wanted to get a new tabletop, you could still use these legs and vice versa with the legs versus the top. So we like to recess our top plates into the underside of the table, and we're just using a router template that we actually carry with the kit for our table legs. This template is super easy to use. Simply attach it with the two-way tape and then set your depth at about quarter inch for cutting. Then you just pocket out all the material inside the template until there's a void big enough to receive the plate. Then we gotta use a Forzner bit to hide those bolt heads and get a nice flush mount. So you can see how clean that look is. This is much better than using bigger, bulkier plates or screwing right through the table leg itself. This provides a really clean look. Now that the legs are done and we got those mounting plates attached, we applied some oil and you can really see how dark this gets on this bigger application here. The oil finish really makes that, that roasted ash look rich and, and very much like Wenge. And we waited the day, let those oil finishes cure up, and now it's time to attach our table legs to the tabletop. You can see how easy this is. It's quick. It took us about, I don't know, under a minute to just attach these legs, and they're going to be rock solid, and they'll be on there forever, unless you want to take them off. Let us know what you think of the final design. I know it's sort of a metal looking base, but they're built out of wood. And if you wanna see more content like this, make sure you drop us a comment, like, and subscribe. We're always looking for your feedback, so let us know below.